Tarantulas, the world's largest spiders, are some of the most fearsome animals in the world. But nestled within the group that contains the tarantulas is their tiny and secretive relative that might just be living under your feet right now. I'm Mikey Green, and my goal is to show just how little we really know about the strange creatures living their hidden lives all around us. While tarantulas are some of the most well-known spiders in the world, these minuscule cousins of theirs are some of the most poorly understood spiders here where we are right now in Texas. Meet the spiny curtain web spider, a member of a rarely seen family of spiders found all over the world, but mostly concentrated in the desert and rocky habitats of Mexico and the southwestern United States. Just because they are rarely seen and highly secretive does not mean they are hard to find, as it didn't take long to find one in its web underneath the rock. Let's take a look. Ah, uh, yep, there's one. Right in the web. It's a pretty big one. I'm gonna try and catch it. Got it. Whew. All right, this, what I have in this tube right here, is an extremely special spider. This is just something I cannot believe I'm truly looking at right now. This is the curtain web spider. One of the most unique, interesting, and weirdly enough, poorly understood spiders out here in the Texas Hill Country. Now, curtain web spiders themselves comprise the family Euagridae. This specific species right here is one that can be found in the southwestern United States, Euagris chisosius. And while many members of this family can look very similar, there is no mistaking this species for anything else here in Texas. But in this tube, you can't see it well enough to tell that. So let's take it out of this tube, let it crawl on my hand, and see how it behaves on my hand. All right. Here it is, right on my hand. This is the Euagris chisosius curtain web spider. And as you can see, it is walking very slow right now. It actually has stopped moving. That is because these things are very sedentary. They basically just pick a spot, build their web underneath a rock or a log or some other piece of cover on the ground and sit and wait. This web is actually very strange for a spider in the fact that it's very soft looking. It looks basically like a curtain. However, it has a tube where this spider will sit in the middle of the tube and basically just sit in there and wait all day underneath their little rock for a small insect like an ant, a termite, a small cricket. Tap its little feet on top of that curtain web and all it takes is a little bit of vibration to scare this little spider out of its web. Now the reason I'm talking so quietly is despite them being a relatively slow moving spider, they are capable of really fast bursts of speed. That is because while they don't necessarily need speed to run away from predators, they more rely on being able to hide in their web. They need to be very fast to strike their prey before it leaves the vicinity of their curtain web. So these are venomous, but they are completely harmless to humans. Not like their larger, similarly behaved relatives, the funnel web spiders, with one of the most toxic venoms in the world. That is actually highly unusual in this group that these are in. Yeah, that's right, I said these are related to the famous funnel web spiders, but that is far from the only strange and famous spider these things are related to. These are a member of one of the most primitive groups of spiders in the world, the mygalomorphs group which actually contains no spiders I've ever seen in my entire life before today. That's right, this is my first ever mygalomorph. That primitive group of spiders contains some of the most infamous spiders in the world. Funnel webs, like I said, but also trapdoor spiders. And most interestingly, given how tiny this thing is, tarantulas. And these things are especially closely related to tarantulas. In fact, they're in the same super family that contains the family with the tarantulas in it as well as the family with these in it. Now obviously this is much smaller than a tarantula, but you can really see the resemblance, not only just in the way they walk, but also in their morphology. You see, what makes my gallimorphs so unique and separates them from the, all the other spiders in the world is a few traits. 
First, their eyes are clustered right in the center of their face. Most of the spiders you see have their eyes spread out throughout their face. However, my gallimorphs, like these guys and tarantulas, have them clustered in a singular spot right in the center. It almost looks like they only have one eye in the middle of their face. That is because my gallimorphs usually do not rely on vision to hunt their prey, like a lot of other spiders do. They instead rely on the vibrations created on their soft sheet-like webs that they build to locate their insect prey. Another thing that sets my gallimorphs apart is the positioning of the spinnerets at the end of the abdomen, all the way at the tip. If you can see those two appendages at the end of this abdomen are the spinnerets. Most spiders have them positioned closer to the bottom of the abdomen. However, my gallimorphs are different in the fact that their spinnerets are at the tip. So if you've seen on tarantulas, the two little stubs at the end of the abdomen, well these curtain web spiders take it to the next level. They have some of the longest spinnerets compared to body size of any spiders in the world. It almost looks like an extra pair of legs sticking out of the end of the abdomen. And while I'm not quite sure what use those long spinnerets have, they're quite good at building these webs because their webs can be much larger than this spider itself, spanning a large chunk of the space underneath the rocks that they build their webs under. And their webs are very dense too. It barely even looks like an average spider web. It just looks like a, a white cloth draped underground. But the most interesting difference between the mygalomorphs and all the other spiders is the positioning of their fangs. While pretty much any spider you'll see around, which comprises the group Araniomorphae, containing most spiders you've probably heard of, wolf spiders, widow spiders, jumping spiders, orb weavers, their fangs are positioned diagonally so they pinch inwards to inject their venom. However, the mygalomorphs have their fangs positioned vertically. So when they bite down on their prey, their fangs move directly up and down to inject their venom. Mygalomorphs also have a different breathing mechanism than araniomorphs, having one extra pair of book lungs. Yeah, these spiders are so primitive and so different that while they are indeed actually spiders, some people refer to the araniomorphs as the true spiders because of just how primitive and wildly different their morphology is from most spiders people know about. This is definitely no huge Texas tarantula, but I am incredibly happy to be seeing this species. And yes, they don't get much bigger than this. They're one of the tiniest mygalomorphs out there. Not the tiniest, but one of the tiniest. And as much as I'd love to see an absolutely humongous mygalomorph spider in the form of a tarantula or a big trapdoor, finally seeing my first member of one of the most interesting groups of animals alive on this planet is an amazing experience that I will never forget. This is just such a unique animal. Let's put it right back under its rock where he found it. So it can keep living its sedentary lifestyle hunting for small invertebrates underground. If you enjoyed learning about the curtain web spider, make sure to check out this video right here where we find giant wolf spiders at night in my home area of South Florida. See you there.